predictable. You can do it over and over again. And certainly, if you make a reasonable commitment, it was not a massive commitment, but let's not pretend that opening three gates and delaying the rest of the attack and wiping in six zealots is absolutely for free. Yes, you might force out some links, but if you're still on two base against a three base zerk, and you're not getting anything done, you're not killing queens, you're not forcing against on the hatch, you're not killing drones, I don't think it's worth it in the long run. So you need to switch up your style a little bit. Hopping over to Yansu for game number three. We're seeing that down in the bottom left-hand corner of the map, the red Protoss player is Axiom Alicia. Boom. Had he defended, maybe it would be 2-0. Instead, he went for the base trade, and it is now 1-1. His opponent up in the top right-hand corner of the map, representing Team Zenith of Origin. His name is Courage. And... He's still in this thing. If you just joined us, this is our second series of the day. The first series was between... Uh, it's supposed to be where you finish me. First, oh, Sage, Sage and Haas. Yes, and it was an excellent PvP series. As Haas was able to come out victorious, I actually just like blanked for a second there, so I, I thought you would be there for me. Because normally you blank, and then I finish your sentence. But Got your back, bro. No Sorry, I was actually uh, <laughs> tabbed over to Twitter just uh, because I, I, I wanted to remind everybody to please to send us some of that feedback. We want to hear from you guys at StarCraft, at MrBitterTV, at Rotterdam08. I want to hear how much uh, you guys like the new clock. <laughs> the new clock in the right position? We're pioneering it over here. You know, we took a lot of flack for our overlays last season, and to be fair, we made some horrendous ones. Yes. But I think the one we got now is pretty legit. It's, it's clean. It's, it's very simple. minimalist. you got a lot of screen space. What do you guys think about the new UI? And what do you guys think about uh, about the Challenger League, and who do you think is going to make it forward? Remember, we still have a very exciting match coming up in Bomber versus Jim. That's where I wanted to go when I started my little story, like telling what happened so far. And of I got your back, bro. I'm uh, finishing your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> you're stealing my thunder. That's what you're doing. <laughs> uh, but uh, Jim Bomber is not the only good match coming forward. We've got Arthur versus Yansu, also known as yeah. IA in the Chinese circle. Is a player that's uh, getting a little bit of uh, of buzz. And then Ian versus Puck. And my buddy, um, shoot. Breaker? <laughs> Breaker, yeah. <laughs> my buddy Breaker SC2, mm. who I was talking to You can see he's a real good buddy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My bad, homie. <laughs> um, I'm going to think twice when Ben calls me a friend in his next interview. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy, uh, what's the guy, the name? I, wor hey, I worked with him for three years. You, you, so you had my back, though. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy Breaker was talking about Ian and how much promise he's showing. <laughs> he thinks Ian's going to take out Puck, which is pretty cool, given that Ian's a completely unknown name to most of us. Mm. Yeah. I would be surprised by that because I think Puck is very solid. Definitely one of the more uh, solid North Americans we currently have. And of course, last series of the day between our very own Chad Minigun Jones. Uh, he's going to go up against Clarity's Saravetti. I think it was a little bit upsetting, man, to see uh, Root Sage losing the first series of the day for all the Root fans out there. And I was a little bit surprised by that as well. I think Minigun is the favorite in his series. Saravetti is a crazy protoss, though, and he made a good run through the qualifiers, so anything is possible. But of course, I think a lot of the eyes are on Jim versus Bomber. That's going to be an amazing match. But for now, we're just going to talk about Alicia versus Courage. Game number three played here on Youngson. Yep. Uh, both players opening up pretty standard. Alicia has been favoring this one gate expand, uh, using it exclusively thus far in this series. Uh, also, once again, hiding a probe mm -hmm. over here outside the third expansion. Of the extractor was a little late at this time, Ben, for Courage, and I kind of wonder if he's going to do something kind of crazy. You yeah. know, I... I for no. a second, I thought he was going to do some kind of roach build, but it looks like yeah. he's just going to start speed and pull drones off gas. So I was, I was with you. Yeah, he started but, speed uh, a little later as well. He took his extractor in different timing. Of course, this was a hatch for us this time for Courage, which I don't think he did in the previous games, correct? It was pool before hatch, as far as I know. Mothership Core is going to cross the map and get a little bit of scouting done, but with uh, three queens out, it's not going to be able to do much harass. Just going to do a little bit of poking. Mm -hmm. Courage is also searching for this hidden probe, and he's going to find it, Kev. Good job being active with his lings. Hunts it down. Says, hey, get out of here. Always a sad moment when you're probing and you're trying to hide. I'm very happy when he sees the Mothership Core across the horizon, yeah. though. Recall me. <laughs> 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 Let me just mind it at the simulator, man. Pay wasn't all that bad after all. <laughs> at least I was safe. Courage making a few more lings now, realizing that, hey, he, sh he should probably be careful. Uh, First he made a spine, and he's like, no. I make spine when I can just drop a hatchery. <laughs> <laughs> this, this drone is like, I have way bigger ambitions than being a spine crawler for the rest of my life. I could be an entrepreneur. I could bring life to lots of things. <laughs> I guess some entrepreneurs might do that. <laughs> I want to be one of them. <laughs> it's like a very... Uh, 
good-natured entre entrepreneur. <laughs> You're not a money-hungry capitalist. No, not at all. You're like a philanthropist. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, file and that gets wiped in will be cancelled immediately because these links did find it. Money Super is going to work on this hatchery a little bit, but once more, when this three gate opening starts to be a little bit predictable, of course, Alicia can still follow it up with a very strong two base push, but it's not going to be the same as Polar Knight. Zerglings are going to try to find an opening, but there is a, mm. a Zealot Gatekeeper this time. Does not exist. Courage has tried this every single game, every single time he's come up empty, but just once, one Zergling run by is enough to end many, many games. So uh, I, I absolutely understand why he's been going for it. Yeah, not just that. I mean, at the end of the day, he has two bases saturated, so it, it doesn't really hurt him that much to make a few links in that phase in the game. Especially, yes, he sees one pylon go up, and he sees, indeed, the pylon gets cancelled. But what if there's another pylon, and suddenly six zealots show up, and he doesn't have Zerg links? So I really don't mind that he's making those links. It slows him down a tiny bit, but he's not doing it of like, 22 drones. He's doing it of 40, so mm -hmm. who cares? We see Alicia adding gates this time. Yeah, she's mm. just going up to five. Never mind. Well, actually. Well, I think it's going to be another two base push. Yeah. This is an excellent two base map. Um, we see Blink Stalkers. Didn't Naniwa use a Blink Stalker build against Revive on this map in the BlizzCon playoff? He's got the Warp Prism out, Kev. This is almost Roddy build esque. Mm. Almost. Yeah, he's doing it with the Twilight and plus two. He's getting an Immortal now as well. But he's going to run into Hydro Link, but Hydro Link with plus one armor, as it seems. Uh, Courage needs a few more drones though if he wants to play Hydro Link, as it's a little more expensive than just Links and Roaches. Uh, he could go up to, uh, let's say, 61, 62 drones, and I'm curious to see if that's going to be his magic number or if he's going to stop at 57. Yeah, he's going to put the brakes on at 57, realizing perhaps that some aggression is coming his way. First three Zealots are going to unload in the main base right now, and Zerglings, where are they? Uh, they are in the natural expansion, and uh, he, oh, actually, he's going to take uh, a few big water drone losses. That. This is going to be painful. I don't think he can really deal with uh, these elves until the Hydras are out. Now the Hydras are out. He needs to position the Hydras properly, though, Ben. Oh, Hydras taking a lot of damage from these Zealots. But still going to manage to chase away the Warp Prism. Uh, oh, that said, the Zealots are sticking around for a long time. Yeah, he's going to need some more units There's to only have. four Hydras out on the map. There's and nothing uh, else. Okay. Courage has misplayed his hand a little bit. These other two hydras are going to come over to help. A few more units are beginning to hatch. 18 lings, three more hydras on the production tab. Right, this is hurting Courage's economy quite a bit, man. He's only on 56 drones right now. He's not mining off his main for a long time. Yes, eventually he did clean up all these zealots. But uh, these zealots, those were deposable zealots, man. Uh, Alicia's just setting himself up for the real deal, which, of course, plus two bling stalkers. Yep. Uh, five drones killed in that exchange. I think mm. Courage is still capable of hanging on, though. Mm. I don't. I don't feel like it's been. Uh, it's going to come down to force fields. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to force fields. It's going to come down to micro, and it's also going to come down to whether or not Courage is uh, as urgent as he needs to be. He doesn't need to be droning right. anymore. It needs to be all uh, Zerglings and Hydras. Uh, it's going to be very hard. He doesn't have massive creep spreads. And it's also going to be... Uh, I kind of wonder what he's going to do with the War Prism, but it seems like he's going to use the War Prism with his army. I wouldn't have minded him at all to see him warping like four Zealots in the main, because that would make it really hard. And forcing your opponent to split up Hydras is the last thing he wants to do. There's no Hydra speed either. Army supply shows us 47 against 59. Mm. This is going to be a very difficult hold for Courage. About 50% of 59, Ben? Because of voice fields, it's only 25. Or 24 and a half. Bam. Actually, it's way more than that. 28. 20, 29 You're and right. a half. <laughs> 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 we both fail. <laughs> Either way, 29 and a half is not 45. <laughs> That's so we can agree on that number at least. 57. Now, Roachron is being morphed in for courage, but. Uh, Alicia is going to play this carefully, he's going to play this very methodical, <laughs> and it's going to be so hard for Courage to get a favorable engagement. Oh, I oh was a little bit too man. far in the front. Alicia's just going to shred this army. There is no hope. Those force fields are absolutely perfect. Alicia is great at executing these immortal pushes. Uh, Hydra's finally able to engage, but uh, it's just not going to be enough, I fear. Drones have been pulled off the line. They die immediately. And the immortals, of course, moonwalking their way to victory. Uh, and uh, seeing staying alive in the process. Another strong two base push here by Alicia with good execution. Those zealots in the main really made the difference this game, I feel. Uh, Courage slightly underreacting there, not having all the units in the right place. Miss microing his hydras a bit, and Alicia just follows it up with a very